Good evening, everybody. It's Friday night. It's Barber's Arms, episode 62, Friday the 23rd of July, in conjunction with the British Barber's Association and War UK. We've got a packed show tonight. Me and guys are going to take you through the weekly news, see what's happening in and around, and uh, see what's happening in the barber and hairdressing industry. And also, Gary's been on his Paddy and Max tour as well in his uh, mobile home, so we'll find out where Gaz has been stopping off, see if he's been to see any of you while he's out and about. He's out for the next two days. So beware down in Wales if Gary pulls up in his camper van, he's going to come in and have his uh, tash and his beard all trimmed up. Uh, ten past eight, we have got a brand new guest on Barber's Arms. We are going to uh, interview the director of sales for the Cow Corporation, who operates Goldwell and KMS. Mr. Mitch Luke is a great friend of mine and a fantastic sales uh, uh, sales director. And uh, we'll get a better insight what new barbers and industries should be looking for when a sales rep comes into your shop. Uh, around about 8.40, 8.45, we have got the um, Make-A-Wish Foundation, the Barber's Ride. The two guys who devised this, Xavier and Richie, are going to be coming on to talk about their upcoming Barber's Ride, a massive charity, fantastic money that they've raised. I'll let them talk about that when they come on a little bit later. And then to finish off with a local hero, one of Wall's very own, we've got Jake Lansley from Lifestyle Barber. He's going to be joining us all on episode 62. Here we go. Without further ado, please welcome the camper man, the mobile home trucker, Mr. Gary Machin. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Simon Shaw. Uh, it is true. I have been out and about on my travels, but up and down the country. It's been absolutely fantastic. Um, got a bit of a tan, got a bit burnt as well, but we've... Uh, Tasted a few different things all around the country. Uh, before we get further on, uh, thank you last week for Mr. Tim Avery. What a great guest. Uh, fantastic guest on the show. Uh, insight into Tony and Guy. Beautiful. He said a few things there. I don't know went down too well, but he, he was funny as well at the same time. We had 68,000 68, views last week. Uh, we thank you all every single one of you near and far so mate how's your week been um th those were just tim's ex-girlfriends <laughs> <laughs> um yeah really good insight into tony and guy last week and um i think everybody i spoke to were um kind of blown away with how many franchises this guy had at one point 24 franchises and still operating nine um his share in paracetamol and anodine must be absolutely gigantic with that amount of staff in this industry. Um, busy week, guys. Uh, I was in London uh, Monday, Tuesday. We've got a big thing coming up on this Monday, guys. Don't forget to have a look on our Instagram on the World Pro and Simon Shaw wall. We've got a massive uh, photo shoot happening with the Fellowship Project men's team. That's going to be happening in London this coming Monday. And it's a really cool uh, looks we're going for. Um, so I'm really excited to work with Jonathan Andrews on Project Men and the guys that's going to be joining us there. We've got E.O. Banton, who's a bit of past guest. He's going to be doing the photography. So looking forward to that next week, guys. But really looking forward to tonight as well, because I think some of the guests we've got on are really different um, tonight. And I'm looking forward to getting them interviewed and hopefully pass some great knowledge on to our listeners. Yeah, well, I mean... Guest-wise, can't get any better tonight. We've got a bit of everything for everybody, I think. Uh, we've got a you know, director of sales. We've got the Captain Fawcett team coming on and give us a little sneak preview on the Barber's Ride. And we've got Jake Lansley as well, who's, you know, we know him very well yourself. He's part of your team. But also, you know, he, he, he's a great guy. Met him quite a few times. And hopefully we're going to see what he's been up to in and around his salon as well. Um, his lifestyle barbering, so. What, what are we drinking tonight? What are you putting me through? Because I've got to say, last week I had a sugar rush after them ciders. I had, I had well, cideritis on Saturday morning. Well, you can't blame me for that because you actually asked for those beers last week. So, anyway, this week we've got to change. We've got Brewdog. The Brewdog machine that it is. Little bit, bit, of back, bit of background behind this, uh, this brand. 2007, it's worth 2 billion quid now, since 2007. Uh, the guys who are behind it, they're in Scotland, James Watt and Martin Dickey. We, we're drinking the Punk IPA tonight, first one. So you've got this one in there. This is 
yeah, you know, you always like to start. I asked you what order you wanted to do them in, and you said, "Yeah, like just that." It, it, I, I opened it, and it didn't bubble up. It's not a flat. Is it flat? This? <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Oh, yeah. Um, this is the original amber nectar. This is their original product. This is what they started with. It's five point four percent. It's a craft beer. It's a craft IPA. Indian pale ale for those of you out there that don't know. So you have the sweetness, but when you finish, you have that little tart, uh, like bitter taste at the end of it. So it's a bit of a cross between a lager and a bit. Do you know what this is like? This is very similar to the Belgian beers that we had. Do you remember the, the Belgian beers that we did, the blondes? Yeah. This is, this is very similar. So good out. Taking out of the nice Barber's Arms glasses as well. We previewed the t shirts. Last week, had lots of requests for the T-shirts, actually, Gary. Oh, I love that, you see. This is, this is my kind of beer. Uh, one will be all right as a start, if we were having just a beer and just to be sociable and everybody else were drinking it. <laughs> try one. <laughs> the thing is with this, it's, it's, it's a craft <laughs> beer. Uh, the guys who, who started this in, uh, in Scotland, the, the brew dog name itself is a bit of a homage to the US beers. You've been you've been to America. You you know what North America's like. It's full of um, craft beers. You know the, these these beers companies that have sprouted out all, all over the country. Religiously, you know, in the past, US beers have been what they say US absolutely useless. But they've got a huge following now of, of craft beers. And Brewdog jumped on this and started and decided, right, we're going to do something for the UK. And this is what they came up with. And since then, they've got, you know, loads and loads of different products. But, you know, just a little insight. They're from Allen in Aberdeenshire in, in Scotland. As I've just said, they're worth about two billion. The actual company is now. They've got 78 uh pubs around the world they're all over the world international in fact you know last time we went down to you know when we did the the, the shoot and the um when we yeah, went yeah. down to bullies we were in a brew dog pub down there in london weren't we i was just gonna say to you then the, the where i stay in london on Edgeway road that's the local pub outside the hotel um and well, that's why i know i went in there on tuesday night i had a lager called the lost lager um there which were like a pills and a lager but look it's nice i tell you what it's strong as well i can feel it straight away <laughs> well this is the, well Tiny this and another echo. one that's coming you know in a little bit a little bit later in the show this is my favorite but i have got when we went down together um later on we're gonna have this little baby the alvis juice that is my favourite at the moment. I, I, I've, just, I've just noticed something as well. Look, look at the size of my cans that I've got compared to the ones <laughs> that you've got. I've got double portions here. Jeez. It's, no, it's just how far away from the camera, camera you are. Trust me, they are bigger. What are these? I don't know. 440 mils. Oh, yeah, you, you've gone for the big dog. I ain't gone for any, any dog. <laughs> yeah, I've got, got small hands. <laughs> uh, we'll I see how they go on anyway. Well, our first guest tonight, we've had some tremendous evenings in London uh, as a young hairdresser going into central London from 95. Um, he was up and coming then as the Southern Sales Manager and then he became a uh, National Sales Manager. Then he became Director of Sales. Um, I spent a lot of time with him, uh, not only from a work capacity, but personally as well. Uh, we are, we're very close mates over the years. We've had family evenings together and stayovers and stuff like that. So he's a great guy. I'm lo really looking forward to uh, having him on. And also as well, Richie and Xavier. Richie, he's past guest and one of our expo uh, stands that we had on our expo show. So Richie from Captain Forces. Xavier obviously looks after some big products as well at Red Hot. He's got Ruzel and... You know, got some other great products there that he's got. So they'll be coming on to talk a little bit about Barber's Ride and the great charity, which is Make-A-Wish uh, Foundation, and then finish off with Jake. So it's an action-packed show tonight, guys. Yeah, I mean, you know, we said we were going to cut down the shows uh, and have less guests so we could spend more time with them. 
And now we're kind of building it up even more. So it's great. I like it. Keeps us on the toes. We have lots and lots of guests coming on. So please stay with us and ask any questions. If you want to ask any questions for any of our guests tonight, just come straight on, interactive. Just go onto Facebook. Uh, you're following us anyway. So just give us a nudge and we will try and answer all your questions. Okay, just before we get made cheer, don't forget to follow us on our Instagram account, Simon Shaw Wall, Gaz is the British Barber, and Barbers underscore arms. Them's our Instagram accounts on the website as well. It's thebarbersarms.co.uk. And if you want to email us with anything, if you want to be a local hero, if you want to be a guest on the show, email us at barbersarms at thebritishbarber.com. Those are our social media accounts. Without further ado, pulling up in some kind of big flash car, into the car park at Barber's Arms. We should have our first guest joining us now. Um, I'm not going to spin back. We'll ask him the questions when he starts his career, Gary. But I'll just give him a little intro into this uh, amazing guy who I'm very honoured to call in this industry a real true friend. Every time we see each other, it's fantastic. We've had some amazing nights in London, but working his way up from a sales rep to becoming Southern Sales Manager, to becoming national sales manager, to becoming director of sales at the Cal Corporation, running Goldwell sales teams. I've learned so much of this guy. And so listeners, I am really can't wait for you to listen in this. We're going to push you on some questions, what you should be looking for from sales reps and uh, how he's run his, his career as well in this fantastic industry. Without further ado, please welcome the director of sales for the Cal Corporation, the one and only Mr. Mitchell Lucas. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Uh, good evening, Simon. Good evening, Gary, and all your listeners. It's um, it's great to have an invitation to, uh, to such a good night. And I didn't know whether you drink real beer, guys, or not. So uh, I thought I'd bring my drink along, which is my gin and tonic. And um, I'm up and underway with you all. Thank Excellent. Good, good out, sir. All the very best. All the very best to you. So, right, Gary, so, I'll over to you. Yeah, so, uh, Mitch, I, I don't know you personally. I've heard a lot about you from Simon and uh, our mutual friend, Mr. Keith Coniford, because, and that's, a, that's one of my questions later on, but we'll go to that. Uh, and uh, there's a few people that want to be remembered to you because you, you're so well respected within the industry. Uh, but for, for our members out there and all our viewers, I, I do this every week. Um, there is a few people out there that probably don't know you as well as Simon does. So could you give us a quick snapshot, a little bio of who you are, what you are, and where you are now, sir? Yes, of course I can, Gary. I work for the Cal Corporation, and um, I am the sales director for the direct sales division. So I look after a team that looks after salons, hairdressing salons, barbers, men's grooming, the whole side of that, of that business of ours. I've been with uh, Cal now, that was originally Goldwell since 1983. And I've stayed with the same company right the way through. So it's, it's 38 years and I'm in my 38th year now. So um, I've stayed loyal to the brands and loyal to the company. But what's kept me there is the, the industry and um, the, the people that we work with. And I couldn't think about leaving the industry. And the company's been so good to me that there is no reason for me to leave and, uh, and move on to another company. But when I joined way back in 1983, I was, they only employed and sales. Uh, salespeople. So at the time, I'd already was working for another company in a different industry. I worked for a company called Maybelline, which was uh, uh, a makeup company, an American makeup company that I'm sure we all know. And uh, I had my, my first two interviews with a guy called uh, Ray Roberts. And Ray Roberts is a legend in the industry as well, because he was the guy that started the company off here in the UK. And uh, the only way that we could, we could make a footprint in the market was through Van Sales. It was difficult in the time because we were predominantly a color house, but 
but we manufactured perms. And as we all know, that perms way back in the 80s was real, real big business. Salons would buy anything between 100 to 300 perms a month. So it was quite a remarkable business to, to go into. And I started as a territory sales exec, van sales. We, we had to order the product. We had to load up our own vans and then set about going out the hairdressing salons and the barber shops of their time. And I started my, my first four weeks with the company. I ordered half a pallet of stock that got delivered. And then that stock had to be put away in a garage. And then you took it out of your garage and put it on, on your van to go and sell. And then I, I stayed a territory sales exec for approximately 18 months. But I reached the stage where I was selling between six to eight pallets of stock a week. And uh, it was so much at the time that eventually the van sales operation had to move on to us having company cars. And then from a company car, we had hand terminals that we could print the orders in, the orders got delivered. I moved from there, become an area sales manager, never managed in my life. But um, I was told by, uh, by Mr. Roberts that all I had to do in management was to teach the other salespeople how to do it. That was his quick way. Show them what you do. And that is a form of management in itself, which I did successfully for, for five years, working in London and the Southeast, progressed into regional management, national sales management. And then I started um, deploying some of my work across Europe. And um, I traveled around the majority of countries in Europe. I've worked for the company out in America. I went to Australia and worked out there for, for six weeks. And uh, still staying based in the UK. And then I took on the, uh, from a national sales manager, I took on the director's role. Now, the work that I'm doing at the present moment in time, I, I, I run a team of um, nearly 60 salespeople, management, salespeople, the complete mix. And I'm responsible for all the products that get sold to the hairdressers, to, to our, our men's grooming, our barbers, and um, uh, unisex ladies hairdressers and salons. So I covered the whole lot and um, never looked back thoroughly enjoy working in this industry, fabulous people to work with, a great, great bonding right the way through. So at the age I am now, Gary, it looks as if I'm going to see out the rest of my career in this industry. I don't know how I'm going to retire after all these years, but eventually somewhere down the line that retirement will be planned out. But um, I'd like to think that I can give it another 10 years. Because one thing that, that people talk about, and I talk about it a lot, you've got to enjoy what you are doing. And if you don't enjoy what you're doing, you need to move and find a career that you enjoy doing. So I enjoy doing what I'm doing, and that's the reason why I do it. So um, it gives you a good insight. I've managed in the early days, we had 92 salespeople on the road. So um, we, up and down the country, we, we're at present now uh, working in Ireland. I work with, with a great team in Ireland, Trinity Salon Partners, that are the, the distributors of, uh, of Goldwell. Tough out there, though, at the minute, isn't it, in Ireland? We're, we're struggling with Irish sales, especially we're getting products in and out and... I think there's there's some kind of struggles there in Ireland at the minute. I don't know you yeah, guys are. It's pretty challenging, that's for sure, Simon. And um, and then uh, trying to preempt and buy forward and get our stock into Ireland and into a holding base down in Dublin, that that is a challenge. But um, it's a challenge that we have to work with at this moment in time. 
Now, we, we're going to talk to you, you're listening, Barber Zam, so we're going to ask you some career questions. We're going to ask you to share some wisdom with some barbers and hairdressers that might not buy gold well, but what should they look for with sales reps when they're coming in? What's a little tip that when you can stick out a charlatan and you can see a real good salesman? So we're going to blow that up tonight as well. But before we start on any of these questions, we'll finish off some quick fire questions at the end to find a bit more. Mate, we are both football fans. Uh, let's just quickly go back to a week last Sunday. Uh, how was it in Westmoreland? Was the atmosphere good? Did you have a did you have a good evening? But obviously not a very good ending. Yeah, it was uh, it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, the the day, the actual weekend, the Saturday and Sunday leaving up leading up to that Sunday evening, and um, we, we fully get behind. Our, our, our country and uh, it, it's all or nothing so you can imagine the disappointment when we didn't quite pull it off but um, credit to the manager credit to the team proud to be English um, uh, I think we've done a fabulous job and then when I look back to, to the way it's all worked in the last four years it gives me great great hope that we go into the World Cup and we should be in a very very good place so, yes, I'm disappointed. I'm glad we got to the final. It gave us a great three and a half weeks. I think everybody through, especially through what we've gone through over the last 15 months, we all had smiles on our faces. We were all enjoying ourselves. And they, 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 they brought that, that happiness to us all. Well, the day, the day yes, on I'm Sunday night that we did that. I must. I don't know where anyone else, guys. You were same, same thing. Build up all day. I, I, I woke up at six a.m. on the Sunday morning. I'd done ten thousand steps before I'd even started um, my breakfast. Couldn't get. To, I just. I was nervous all day. And at the at the end of the penalty, I think I've never seen pubs empty as quick. It was almost like it was destined that the rain were pouring. People were walking in rain. It was somber. Um, and it was just a great three weeks. And as I say, I think we all enjoyed it thoroughly anyway. So, yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it as well. Absolutely. And, and there he is. I mean, you'll have to go down there. Um, the hospitality is fantastic. They've got a beautiful restaurant down there called The Swan. I stay in a little bit place called The Joiners. It's a, a pub. But it's really quaint. And it's just a... We were down there a few few weeks ago and the weather were nice. Right up your street. Guys, you'd love it down there. Sat outside having a few beers. Nice food. Well, it, yeah, I, I'd love to go down. I mean, you're a Chelsea fan, though, aren't you, uh, Mitch? Yes, I am, Gary. That season's older there. Well, I, I mean, I, you know, you, you've had some great years at the moment. I, I can remember when Chelsea... I met a guy on, on holiday, and he was a, he, said, he was as bad as me. I'm a Stoke fan. I'm a Stoke City fan. That's where I come from. So I've, uh, I've, I've had the pain, and I've had the, the, the rush, but... Uh, Mr. David Drew says you're not such a bad lad. Same as he's a gooner, David Drew says you're not a bad lad for a Chelsea lad anyway. No, I'm not bad. And I, I, I'm Gary. I'm, uh, I call it an original Chelsea fan. I, I was born in Stockwell and grew up in Peckham. All right. I had a choice of two football teams at the time, and that was, um, that was Chelsea or Millwall. And I've still got friends that support Millwall and I chose Chelsea so I go back to the 70s and 80s before any money uh, made its way into the club I remember the days of Ken Bates and, yeah uh, you know the fact that they had to put up on the ground in them days games because Victoria ground isn't it the, the old Stoke ground yeah yeah the Victoria I mean ground yeah, the Victoria Ground. I mean, I remember it well. And we used to come down to your place. And Millwall, they were absolute hooligans. We, we've had some right run-ins with Millwall fans as well. So that's another story for another yeah. day, though, I'm afraid. Absolutely. Uh, Mitch. Absolutely. Mitch, from, from, let's get back onto your career then. So um, you've done it. You've been from the very bottom and got and taken the company to the very top. Um your most abiding or proudest moment within the country, within the company, what you've actually achieved, um, where would it be for you? I, 
I would say that um, to to get the accolade for for long service, and that was at 25 years, so I've gone past that. I thought that was a great achievement. Um, being asked to travel to Australia to work with the Australian sales team, that was, uh, uh, I enjoyed that side of it, and it was a great pleasure to be able to share the different concepts of of management and sales. That that has uh, that has a lot to say for it, and um, I suppose that the great relationships that I've built up in the industry with um, with with hairdressers, salon owners, and um, being able to go out and see see people that perhaps I haven't seen for a year or two but I'm treated as a great friend bordering a relation of them and it's people that I work with in the industry. So that's where I see it. I was with a guy only this week, John Paul Wyndham. He's got a, a lovely salon and a, and a gents barbers uh, men's grooming upstairs. It's on two floors. And we had a quick bite to eat and he, he, he wanted to introduce me to his daughter who was 18 at the time. And um, uh, he said that, uh, that we go back many generations because his father was, uh, was also a barber and represented the England team in the World Cup of hairdressing. So it's them type of things that, that I, I get a huge amount of pleasure out of. And a great sense of belonging so so that that's sort of a cross section of of where i see that um that i feel that i'm contributing to to what's going on in the industry really so, mitch do, do, obviously you know people watch us tonight but throughout the week we'll have thousands of listeners to this a lot of people watch it in the man caves on saturday mornings or watch it on a sunday everybody's got the different rituals when they listen to barber's arms um I want to ask you a question, not from a Goldwell app point of view, just from a standard point of view. Lots of things have opened back up again now. So salespeople are going back into barber shops. I've seen it. I've been spoiled with my upbringing uh, dimensions, then going straight to work with you guys at Goldwell and Mayfair. So I was exposed. The only reps I've seen work is the Goldwell reps, which is a machine. Um what should salons and barbershops expect? You know, what's the standard when guys just walk in? And, you know, what, what should little things like, you know, do people make an appointment still? Or just people just barge in with a, with a case and say, I've got some of these, got some of these. You know, what should barbers and hairdressers expect from a, a good representative? Uh, I, I think, Simon, that, that, um, that people have got to be courteous in their business and, and do business with respect. And um, in this modern world, uh, we, we, everybody are, are busy people and that includes our hairdressers and our, our barbers. And to think that you can just walk in with a bag of product and expect to get that time with, with a, a busy person and people that run their own business, it's really, really important that you've got to treat their time with respect. And I'm a strong believer, and it's uh, I do a huge amount of training with our salespeople that that we've got to work on booked appointments. You can't expect this business in this modern world to to walk through a door and expect to grab that time with with an owner of a business. So the 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 first steps is, and I and I'm a strong believer as well that perhaps not try and book that appointment on the telephone, which you can do, or you can do through email. But to, to get that booked appointment when you go into the salon without the expectation of getting any time to get that booked appointment. And then the key is that you return for that booked appointment. I'm a strong believer that you've got to build a relationship. And the only way you're going to build a relationship is on this co consistent routine of ensuring that you're going to go back and you're going to see that person. And, and that person being the buyer, uh, running their own business, that the, the, the expectations isn't to buy on the first or second meeting. 
the expectation and the measure is seven appointments before before a salon owner will make any kind of decision. So, so it's a huge amount of respect. It's a huge amount of relationship build. It's the politeness, the communication skills that they've got to have. It's the understanding of our industry as well. That's something that people have got to learn. Uh, <laughs> and and that, that is just the start of it. And then from that start, it's to ensure that you start treating treating owners of business like you would want to be treated, and and when I say that, I, I it's, you you would want to be to have a presentation or be sold to the way that you would want to be presented and sold to, um, and 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 that is that is extremely important, and the other and. and the other thing I would add to that, that you have to take into consideration that is this good for the person that you are presenting and selling to? I've been very fortunate. I've been with this company for 38 years and they manufacture extremely good products. But in this modern world, all companies manufacture extremely good products. So it's the other concepts of the way you should be working and operating with respect. That's the way I see it. Do you know, do you know what? I think you've hit it on the head there. From being a salon owner, uh, you know, educator, and, and, you know, we work the shows. You buy from people, don't you? People, people, we, you know, you, you need to get build that relationship. And I think our industry is full of that as well. Uh, because we build a relationship with our clients, obviously they buy off us, they take our service. But I think it's exactly the same. I think um, you know, from uh, a salon owner's point of view, you're right. We don't expect to buy straight away on the first visit. Um, our time is valuable, exactly. Uh, but I think if you come across as having your best interests at heart, it makes a massive, massive difference. Uh, quickly, just as I started in the industry. I don't know if you can remember it. Do you remember it, the, the product that, you, that Goldwell used to sell? And it was it was a, a spray with a little canister on the top. And you used to refill, used to shove yeah. it on on the top of it, yeah. and you used to refill. Do you yeah. remember that? Sure. I'm I'm really hard as well. That that, 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 was, that uh, must have, that must that have was, been in eighty four, eighty five, yeah. something like it. that. that I was, love I love that for session work for for working around clients and not having a big. And just having that refill, and you ought to yeah. bring that. That was fantastic. It that was, was have you used the golden spray. This golden yeah, spray. yeah. It was, right. So it, the golden spray is now in a golden can. When I was out at Mitch's a couple of weeks ago, but for that, especially if you're doing things like DAs and stuff, combing, brushing it into your vent brush and combing it in, guys, it's the, one of the best. We, we, we're not into Goldwell products tonight, by the way. All other manufacturers out there do good air sprays as well. Cool. Um, <laughs> It's obviously, Mitchell's got a really nice product. I've got the producers shouting down this year. We need to, we've got loads to get through, so we've got to speed this. What's the next drink, Gary, on tonight's oh. schedule? Right, Go just two it. seconds, Mitch. We've got to introduce the next beer. So we've got tonight a Hazy Jane. Have you got yours, Simon? I've got it here. Hazy is it strong? <laughs> so this is, this is a 5%. Uh, this is a New England IPA. Got mango and tangerine in it. This has Simon for you. Oh, part of me five a day. Yeah, this this is definitely one of your five a day. This is. Well, it smells so, fruity. This I love this. this. This is a little bit lower than the last one. Bit cloudy. Good health, everybody. Cheers. I'm. I'm not sure. I, I like the first one's nice. I'm getting built up for this Elvis juice one. That's okay. I can feel them though. They're tiny back of my neck up. I don't know what the fuck you do to me every week, but every week I seem to get fucked on this show. It's not sorry. I do part of my French. Everybody out there, IPA, Blue Dogs are all really good. I uh, really enjoy the drink, but they are strong. They are strong. Mitchell, we're just saying earlier. Uh, you know where I stayed down Edgware Road, uh, the hotel at the bottom, and the smack opposite uh, that there is the Blue Dog Pub. So I had a meeting there with a photographer of the week. Me and Gaz were there. And I've not had the IPAs while I've been going in there, which is crazy because it's the beer that they do. I have a, a lost lager, 
Uh, but I, I kind of, I'm, I might give it a try, Gary, on draft, actually. It's, it's winning me over. Quick question then, Mitchell. Favourite Chelsea manager of all time? Mourinho. Mourinho, there we go. He's using the Simon Shaw Academy Collection Chrome styles that we sent him as well. So uh, I do know he uses them as well. Um, <laughs> a quick question. And, and let, try and speed your answers up just so we can get as much in there. Any barbers or hairdressers that are struggling, and we hear it all the time when I'm doing something at a minute, which is the, 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 the retail perception, how to sell more, but how, how to advise your clients to, to, to use products. For me, it's not selling retail. We're solving problems. If they've got dandruff, solve a problem. If they've got a quiff or a pump, she, she use a product. Use a spray like as just solve a problem. It's not retailing to me. But for barbers and hairdressers out there who are struggling, Better advice, that, what would you give them to do? What do you think what, what, what they should do if they're struggling with retail? They can't sell it. A quick one-liner. Um, show the product that you're using and put it in front of your client. That's it. You want me to speed up the answers? I'll give you <laughs> one-liners. That's it. One put that... We, 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 uh, and speed, just say you've got to move on, Mitch, because I can talk to you guys all night. It's fabulous. But we, <laughs> we, we, we work a system where you, you have to put the product in front of your client and it can sit there, but the client will look at it. It's really, really important. And then you can let your client know these are the products that I've used on your hair. And I know that a lot of the finishing products are used at the end. But when you finish with that finishing product, put it in front of them. You'll be amazed on how much you can you can uh, you can sell in retail. We will put on the uh, on the feed now. You'll not be able to see it, Mitch, but on the feed for all you watching as well, we should put some details there. How to get in touch with Goldwell as well. We've got a fantastic range as well, which I love, which was called Rough Man. I've been using it since you gave it me, Mitchell. Yeah. Smells fantastic. It really, really nice product as well. So another nice retail range that's added to these uh, already ever growing retail ranges for barber shops and men's hairdressers and unisex salons on men's product. It is nice. Hang on, hang, hang on a minute. Rough men isn't that a hair product? Yeah, rough men. Rough men. So where, so where, so where have you been using it? Where have I been using it? On models and mannequins and. <laughs> Well, give me. Did I get one product? I might have got some hair and beauty. I have a body shampoo you give me as well, which was really nice. It was really nice. I know. Now listen, you know, I know. <laughs> now listen, listen. You've got a bit of hair. Don't worry about it. When I send you that golden spray, your hair will look fucking ten foot tall next week. Don't worry about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And so, You'll love it. And, and if if anybody that's that's on that wants to make direct contact with me, they're quite welcome. You can give them my email address, please. I. I'm, I'm always interested. My, my life is this business, so I'd be interested to hear from people. Life is this business here, but also as well, we have a, a beautiful hairdressing salon now that's a, a family business for you guys, um, which is Lucas Hair in West Marlin. Gary, I said to you, beautiful little saying. But in that salon, you've extended the shops, you've got upstairs, downstairs, and, and in the basement, you've got a really cool barbershop that I saw last time I was out there as well, which is really good. Um, obviously, most of your family, uh, your, your partner, your wife, Annie, and uh, the two boys, Perry and Seb, uh, so Perry and um, Dom, Dom, they're in the business, aren't they, as well? How's that work, it, nepotism? How's that family dynamic work? It, it works really, really well because the two boys run the barber shop, the, the men's grooming area downstairs. And as you rightly said, it's been extremely successful. Um, and my wife, she's only part-time. She's working three days a week there. But there's a team around her because the business is on three floors. I have nothing to do with that side of the business. That's theirs. And eventually the, the two boys will run and take over the business. But the, the, the men's side of it has been really, really successful. Do you know what, as well? When we went for that drink as well, I think I uh, the Gaz would, Gaz would be all right with you boys. He'd, he'd give them a run for his money. No oh, problem. Yes. He, he'd, he'd bash him up. He'd bash them up, <laughs> definitely. But we'll, we'll I've, definitely never have to get drink as, I've never seen them drink as quick, Gaz. They were drinking pints as if like, and I'm like, all dressed up, really smart, so well-spoken boys. But a nice conversation. And Wallop, here you go. Have another, another pint. Another pint, Moretti. Wallop, another pint, Moretti. Wallop. 
I'm going, oh boy, fucking slow <laughs> right down. I can't do this now at this age. Um, but I, I do feel, I, me and Annie would probably just sit there drinking and then we'd both fall down somewhere and have to be carried on by everybody. Um, Hang on, do, Sam, before you go into the last question, Sam, can I just uh, thank uh, Mitch as well from uh, Hair and Council, Hair Council and Barber Council point of view, because you have been so uh, respectful and supportive of the Hair and Barber Council. And you invited Keith Conniford to your... Was it what, what 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 is it you do? Is it your annual meeting or no? We 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 have a club called the Hub, and the Hub people can join the Hub, and we we have business seminars, and um, we take them away as well. And I know that Keith joined us, and was was a key guest speaker of ours, and uh, we gave him a great platform, and he he was absolutely brilliant, and. Um, it's, it's something that we couldn't run last year because of lockdown, but we will continue to run when we get back in 2022. You need yeah. to get me on as a speaker at that, Mitchell. I'd love to, love to. But, but honestly, thank you so much for giving Keith thank the opportunity. You, because um, with, with Goldwell, if, if anybody's part of the hub, because you have to obviously qualify to be part of the hub anyway, but I think, I think you actually made everybody there, um, state registered hairdresser as well, which right. was yeah. absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, you, you've been spoke about very highly and, and for the good of the, the industry as well, which is, you know, from a, from a legacy point of view, you've been in the industry so long to give back on that, that point as well. I just wanted to bring that up because, you know, it's really appreciated and we're going in the right direction. And I wish every manufacturer and, you know, uh, brand exactly. out there would do exactly the same thing. So anybody listening out there, just take a leaf out of uh, Mitch, Mitch's, Mitch Lucas from Cow and Goldwell especially. Uh, we, we couldn't do it without you, mate. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gary. Very before we finish off as well, uh, before we finish off, I have to say, from 95, as a young Yorkshireman coming into London for the first time, working in the big city of Mayfair, <laughs> concentrating on my stuff. I got my feet under my under the table after three or four months. I was the dog's bollocks at doing seminars for gold when you were reviewed. And then I started going out with the guys. Mitchell, he said they mentioned Mr. Roberts, MBE, at that point. And uh, we were summoned every evening I was there to go out. And there were some nights... I was coming out of Chinatown. It was daylight. Tell the story of your Chinatown. Your first Chi Chinatown. Chinatown. Tell it now. Went into Chinatown. We had a few beers in the place called the Vigo, right in Central Mayfair after the seminar. And we get into Chinatown. It's like 11, 12 o'clock at night. There's karaoke on. And uh, Mr. Roberts is there telling them all. And it was just full of Chinese triad people. And he's telling them all that he used to slit the grandfather's throats in uh, wars and stuff like that. And I'm looking at him thinking, we're fucking dead here tonight. And we actually got absolutely hammered. And I came out, and as I got out of the building, I looked, and I'd not looked at them, I watch, and it was daylight. And I'm thinking to myself, I've got to go to work in about four hours, and I'm going to struggle here. And uh, me and Mitchell, we, we've spent some fantastic evenings. Mitch, quick question before I go quite a few questions. What do you want to achieve in this industry? What's your last thing you want to achieve? I just want to make sure that the team the management team that are behind me, that they can step in my shoes and make sure we continue on this path of uh, a growth and the way that we work in the industry. So perfect. The relationship building. Okay. Mitchell Lucas, what's your favorite drink? Gin and tonic. Uh, what's your favorite food? Italian. Um, if you had to recommend a TV box series for anybody that's listening, what TV box series would you have you recently watched, or would, would, what's your go-to, or what's the favourite one that you'd you'd recommend? Oh, you've got me. Um, I'm just watching at the moment the guy that um, that uh, did the motor show, and he's bought oh, the farm. He's got the farm. Jeremy Clarkson, the farm. Jeremy Clarkson. I recommend Clarkson. everybody to watch Jeremy Funny. Clarkson, the farm. What's your favourite music? 
Uh, I've got, I could name two. I've got David Bowie, Madness, Paul Weller. That's three I've given you. And um, I was going to ask five, but we're running out of time. Just give me three people you'd, you'd like to be deserted with on a desert island. Uh, I'll take Mr. Roberts, MBE, with me. We've got a huge amount to catch up on. I'd probably, I'd love to see Mourinho out there. And I would take somebody like Mickey Flanagan or, or Jack uh, Whitehall. Excellent. Okay, we've got Mitchell Lucas, great interview with here, Director of Sales for the Cal Corporation. Mitch is having his favourite drink, which is G&T. He's watching the Jeremy Clarkson, the latest series, which is called The Farm, which is hilarious when you get to the sheep episode. I fucking hate sheep, he said. Um, he can't wait to eat them. Um, he's watching his favourite box set, which is The Farm. He's having his favourite food, which is an Italian. The three people on this desert island is Mr Roberts, MBE, Mickey Flanagan, to keep the jokes flowing. And Jose Mourinho to talk tactics about what could have happened better at Chelsea. And he's doing all this listening to the David Bowie soundtracks. Mitchell Lucas, it's been a pleasure to have you on the Barber's Arms, mate. Have a great weekend. Thank you very much. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Gary. My best to everybody. Take care. Take care. Lovely, lovely to see you, mate. We'll catch up very soon, hopefully. Certainly will. Thank you. See you. Good see night. I got you all pumped up. Fantastic. What a lovely fella. I, I mean, I, 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 I've, I've seen him across the room about three times, but I've never actually met him. So, but we've, we've, he's been discussed in meetings, obviously for the Hair and Barber Council all the time because he's bigged up because he's one of the most, uh, you know, the prominent guys who, who supports the, the Hair and Barber Council. So, Got nothing but respect for him, and he's done it from the bottom up, Panty. You know what, though? When I, when I speak to him, I want to, like, stick my chest out and, like, all right, fucking, let's get over this fucking job now. Let's get fucking into it. Come on. Let's have it. I'm Mitchell Lucas. Come on. What a great guy. <laughs> great motivational person. But behind that motivational exterior is a man who carefully plans, he carefully has structures, and, uh, you know, obviously, you do not last 38 years with a company like Goldwell or The Cow. No, I mean, uh, it's it's, you, know what? It, it, you know what, though? It's loyalty. And it's very rare. And, you know, you, you get a lot of product whores out there. You know, they, they flick from one to the other. It's like footballers, isn't it? They go yeah. from one club to another. They kiss the badge. <laughs> I love the badge. You know, kissing the badge. And then a week later or a year later, they broke the contract and they've gone somewhere else. I think it's fantastic I've, to have integrity and loyalty in this industry is fantastic. You see, I say to our Alex, you know, especially some people at Leeds United, how that ended that contract. If I ever played against Leeds United and the backroom staff were there that didn't probably favour you, I would break my neck to score a fucking goal. But what or most importantly, what I would do is. At some point near the game, with the ball were near the touchline, I'd go across and I'd fucking smash it into the dugout. Because <laughs> that's just me. And none of this bollocks about kissing the badge. Because I won't do that. But if I played against the team that's just signed me off or I've gone somewhere else, I would not... I see sometimes where they like put their hands down. I'm not celebrating because I used to play for these. Fuck that. I'll be sliding on my knees saying, come on, get in. Um, <laughs> talking of getting in... These two guys uh, that's coming on now and joining us on Barber's Arms are doing an amazing thing with a charity called Make a Wish Foundation. I was lucky enough, uh, not last year, year before, to be involved in it. We've been involved all along with things at Wall that we've done with it. Um, so we're just going to roll a VT just to give you a little insight, guys, into the Make a Wish Foundation. Roll VT. <laughs>
Okay, guys, welcome back to Barber's Arms. What a great interview there with Mitchell Lucas, the director of sales for the Cal Corporation. Just seen the little trailer video there for Make-A-Wish Foundation, the Barber's Ride. Here we are back on Barber's Arms, and for the first time on Barber's Arms, we've got Richie, who has already been on our expo and already been a past uh, guest on Barber's Arms, but making his debut here as well. Xavier um, from Red Hot and part of the team that's behind Bar uh, Barber's Ride. Guys, great to have you on Barber's Arms. Hey, Simon, yeah. how you doing, bud? Great to see you, Simon and Gaz, and of course my uh, partner in crime, Xavier. Hi, bud. Hey, Richie. I, I can't see Gary, but if he's there, hello, mate. How you doing? I, I'm there anyway, but... Uh, um, so, Rick, so, Richie, is this the Xavier that uh, has turned you off drink? Yes, it is. The last <laughs> drink I actually had was with a glass of Malbec. I'll never forget it. It was in the Malmaison in Manchester. It was the three M's, and I thought, I'm never going to drink again. <laughs> Chris gave up that day as well. I've got a bit of a reputation, I'm afraid, lad. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, Malmaison, you're, you're... Manchester, Malbec. Uh, yeah. I, I am thinking about giving up myself, actually. Um, <laughs> yeah. Not but maybe not, to, maybe not today. Is that the should let you? <laughs> Good, <laughs> Xavier. You'll you'll fit right in in the barber's arms, mate. Uh, anyway, so you good. you'll be good. Uh, you'll, you'll be good. It's well, it's cheap. an absolute pleasure to have you guys back on. Um, Richie, obviously we've had you on before. Um, Xavier, where did the bar? Where did the uh, barber's ride come from? Where where where's this all all all? Flowers well, from. I suppose it's um, it was really myself, uh, Richie, and Colin Petrie, as you know, from uh, Hard Grind. Um, and I was speaking to Colin one day, and he was talking about doing this amazing ride, um, sort of fades and fuel and riding around the country with a couple of mates. And just by chance, I bumped into Richie as well, and he started telling me about an amazing ride he was planning. So I was kind of sort of saying, guys, why don't we sort of combine it and do something together and uh, that was really the sort of like the catalyst for really what is now you know this 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 machine that keeps growing and getting more and more exciting and more and more riders and more and more sponsors and and more and more money for make a wish which is what it's all about really gary yeah we're just going to come on to that question Fantastic. there about the charity just to reach you just talk us a little bit because i think you know that the charity itself as soon as you hear about the charity it just makes you melt and, and you, you just want to give tell us a little bit about the charity richie well the first year we actually this is our fifth year the first year we were help uh, with the lions and um, lions barber collective we helped with actually launch them and we were sponsored with the great ormond street hospital the second year we did older hay hospital and then we just thought to make it simpler for everybody in the country and for people from coming from abroad as well we decided to go with make a wish so last year, even in that whole, you know, pandemic when people weren't doing anything, you know, collectively we were able to raise twenty-seven thousand pounds, twenty-seven, not seven thousand seven hundred and eighty-six quid for Make a Wish, which is just phenomenal. Amazing. The website, guys, is coming up on your screens now. So if you want to get involved in Make a Wish and the Barbers Ride for 2021, the website and the all the details are coming across your screen now as we speak. Um, how much have we raised so far then? Did you say I think well, all together, all together it's over £65,000, but last year alone was twenty-seven. I mean, this wow. year we start, you know, we start at Cutthroat Pete's in, the, in Liverpool, then we go to the House Martins in Glasgow, Stag and Buck in Fort William, Hard Grind in Dundee, Ultimate Grooming in Yarm, and I think you're coming on the last night. We finish up in Lord's Barbering in Leeds, you know? Guys, are you going to come over to Leeds and have a night with me? Yeah, definitely. So, do you do you actually do a region of the country every year, and you know, like a separate region, or how, how do you work it out? We sort of try and um, a little bit of splicing together barber shops that have shown an interest that we get on well with, or we know that are going to be really getting behind the charity. But also, we're really lucky to have uh, one of Richie's good pals, Justin Hazeldean, who's a motorcycle journalist, uh, motorcycle news, uh, does all the best roads. And sort of really with his knowledge of where to ride and the barbershops 
sort of volunteering to host one of the events, we kind of it kind of almost sort of writes itself the route sort of thing. So uh, that's kind of how we're going to end up um, doing the beautiful roads of Scotland uh, this year. And you know, so oh, so sorry, guys. Uh, sorry, sorry. So so you know the guys that are involved. How how many do you actually get involved now? How many are on the ride? I know uh, Dan Ricks is part of it, and you know the guys from Hard Grind, you guys especially. But how how many do you average on? Is he getting bigger every year? Or, are you adding to this? How many do you get on the ride? We've got um, over 40 riders this year, and we had people coming in from Sweden, from Holland, from Germany, and unfortunately those guys are going to be unable to join us again this, this year. But next year we're hoping to head down into the West Country, so we're looking at starting somewhere near Bristol and then heading right down to, to, to Cornwall. But I think um, what's really important is that the people who've supported this, I mean, we couldn't do this without the, the sponsors, the long-term sponsors have been people like Barberside, you know, where the Barber's Ride name came from, Captain Fawcett, obviously, Hard Grind, Rosal, 81 Energy Drink, Lind, Ball Clippers again, who've been right from the very beginning, American Crew, Uppercut, and Barber Evo, who's been like the media partners. But this, I should really give a special mention to Vince Camp. I mean, he's a, an artist that's well known to many barbers. He's, he's recorded many barbers for posterity. And if you go on to our website, barbersride.com forward slash Vincent Camp, there's a possibility it's only 10 quid a ticket. There's only a thousand tickets. His paintings start at 15 grand. You've got a chance of having you or your shop recorded for, again, again for, for the longevity. So please buy a ticket. Support every single penny is going to make a wish. Please try and get a ticket for that. I, I've bought 10 tickets and Vince is quite worried that, um, that it's not gonna, my, um, my body's not gonna fit on a portrait. So I think he's gonna have to, do a landscape version just to get my sort of, you know, tummy in. So, so, so save him from the indignation of having a landscape painting and buy lots of tickets to stop me getting one, I'd say. Yeah, definitely. Well, listen, I, I, I'm definitely going to come to the Leeds thing. And I know we, we, we're helping to support with the buddy bags for the riders and everything. Yeah, so keep be great. Thank all, you. all trimmed up. It's, uh, it's the least we could do. And it's, it's a great cause again. Again, coming up on the screens, guys, there's how to get involved. Just popping up on your screens now. If you want to get involved, if you want to buy a raffle ticket to have your famous the famous Vince Camp to do a portrait of you, or if you just want to donate, um, you know, um, it's just an amazing course. So let's do everything we can to get behind that, guys. Uh, guys, tonight, uh, I'll, I'll do a, a, a donation tonight. I know we get involved with Wall, I give my time a wall, but I want to put 100 quid in tonight for yeah, you guys. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So, Fantastic, um, thank good. you. Thank you, Simon. That's amazing. Do you know if we can well, also... well, well, hold on a minute, Xavier? Gas? Of course, I'll do it. Yay! Oh, no, you see. Bad. Well, I'll get it. Monkey see, monkey do. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Love Brilliant. It. Do you know what? Do you know? Do you know what, guys? I was going to say that, and he got in before me. So ah. He looks oh. like the... <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Just, just quickly, what are, what are the dates you're doing this as well for our viewers? Well, we start on the seventh of August. That's a Saturday. We actually meet up in Cutthroat Pete in Liverpool, and then we ride on on the Sunday, and we ride right through till the till the Thursday. So it's the best part of a week's ride. You don't have to do the whole ride. You can just join us for one of the sections and then put a, you know 30 or 40 quid into the pot. The amazing thing is, thanks to the sponsors, it costs 180 quid to join the ride. But the goodie bag you're getting is like 250, 300 quid's worth of stuff. So you're quids in before you start, plus you're supporting the charity. So it's a, it's a no-brainer. It doesn't hey, matter what, ki what kind of bike you've got, you know, Honda, 90, a Harley Davidson, whatever floats your boat, everybody's welcome. I've got a mountain bike with a battery on. I just think I get a bit fucking lag behind you all on, on the road. Guys, this is what's the power of Barber's Arms. The producer just sent to us, me and Gaz have put 100 quid each, and each is 200 quid from us personally. And um, Barber's Arms producers are going to double that as well. So, oh, hey. we yeah, 100 quid <laughs> off Amazing. most guys coming in as well. So, look. We should be doing these every night. We don't, That's need, fantastic. we don't need to do a ride. Let's just do Barber's Arms and we can raise all this money for you guys <laughs> as it is. Uh, Thank you so much. Um, Thank you. I would like to say, Simon Gary, um, if anybody wants to get involved next year, I 
a, a barber shop that fancies hosting an event. You know, it's kind of basically a party charity fundraising event every night. Um, we would very much like and, and invite people to throw their hats in the ring for, for next year. Um, and if anyone rides a bike and fancies joining us and maybe sort of a little bit worried or a little bit nervous or something because they don't know anyone, you know, we're a really friendly bunch. And every, isn't that right, Richie? Everyone can rock up and they'll be friends instantly with everyone. Whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. I have to pull you up on that, Xavier. <laughs> I was in Living St. Anne's and we were waiting at the barber shop. Have you ever watched one of these American films where the Hells Angels, you can hear this, <laughs> well, you hear it from two miles away. They all pull up on these massive alleys, all in black leather. It's not friendly at all, it's fucking scary. People were part in the streets. We had pizzas and it were all great. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Great. Yeah, great. thanks to, 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 to Alan and Reese Speak uh, for hosting us that night as well, which was, which was very kind of them. Well, it'd be yeah. nice if they oh, I've just heard some news to uh, some news today. Um, I have, Xavier, I haven't had a chance to talk to Xavier. Daily Mirror has called us today. They want to cover the right. Ah, uh, that's amazing. Yeah, uh, yeah. But it's not yeah. the Barber's Arms, though, is it? No, 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 not a patch on that. <laughs> oh, look, you've been on 11 minutes and you got 400 quid. Fuck me. It's, <laughs> this is like uh, children in need. We've got more money in here than children need. Yeah, oh, brilliant. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, hey, we Jeff, have, we have before you leave us, just one last push, uh, uh, Richie, Xavier, one last word off each of you, uh, if people want to get involved, or, or you know, just uh, just give us a last quick word from each of you. David, you go first. Yeah, no, look, I mean, it's my favourite week of the year. I absolutely love riding with what, what have become all of my really close pals. We have an absolute ball every night, every day on the road, um, and we raise money. So, hey, What's not to like? Yeah, be part of it. I mean, it's an absolutely fantastic adventure. You're guaranteed to have a really great time, meet some chums with similar. They're all related in the industry in one way or another. And thank you very much to the sponsors without whom this wouldn't happen. Thank you very much, everybody. Well, it's been, it's been great to have you on the show. We will see you in Leeds. Hey. And I'm going to try and get a little monkey pit bike. Yeah. To Simon to follow no, you, to follow to follow you round. I might have to carry, carry him round in a van or something. Hey, listen, you, you know me. Them. I might not do the bike because the bar was right, but I might turn up at Leeds on the best fucking alley you've ever seen in your life. Oh, so. good man. Right, Just you. don't write it off. Definitely well, suit your lad. Well, we do. We do have a support down. truck, so. <laughs> Guys, listen, great, great cause. You're great guys. You know what I think about you both in the industry anyway. Um, great to see you, Zib. Um, I know it's been a long time. I'm looking forward to catching up and getting a beer together with you. Richard, yeah, looking forward to getting a glass of water with you. Not. Um, <laughs> we're probably going to see each other now in Leeds. That'll be next time we see each other. But we'll Brilliant. have a great catch-up and guys will come over and we'll spend the night with you. So, good That'd luck, guys. Amazing. Have a great and weekend. thank you, generosity, and, and your hospitality, guys. Yeah, Barbers Arms, thank you for your support. Gentlemen, you rock. Cheers, guys. Thank see you. Bye-bye, bye. Well done. Sure, this, this show costs me, guys. It's, it's, it's a good, 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 good night. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. Well, great cause. These guys are, 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 have done something really good. And do you know what I like is it's not smash and grab. Sometimes people do a charity for a year or two years. They've still caught this for four or five years. So, you know. Well, before we get a little clearer, anyway. on five past nine, what's my third drink? Come on. Here we go. So we've got my favorite uh -huh. now. This is what I'm going on with you. So we've got Alvis juice. So this is brew dog. Putting it on there. In our Barber's Arms speciality glass that we were sent. There we have it. Absolutely beautiful head on it. Perfect. So this is uh, 5.1. This is oh, that's great, nice. This is a grapefruit. This is the, you see again, you like the sweetness. This is the I, grapefruit one. I could have this for breakfast then if it's a grapefruit. Yeah. Good elf, sir, all the very That's best. That's my favourite. Good good elf. Uh, good luck to uh, Richie and uh, Xavier. Um, and good luck to Mitch Lucas, great guest tonight. Guys, that's my favourite, without even getting any... Uh, 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 that is really nice. That is, look, that, that's what that. we were drinking. I, I, I was drinking drink. in London with you. 
keep, keep that ice cold. That is a really nice drink. So these are all really nice. Indian Pale Ales, craft session beers, these are. You, They're all the way you know from, uh, from Scotland. Do you know what, though? Do you know, I, I like a lager, I like a Moretti or like a Stella or a Peroni. But do you know, with those, they've got a real taste to them, a distinctive oh. flavour. It's like a wine. I can taste the grapefruit. I could taste the, the mango. In the, they are nice. I could get that. I like, I really like that one. Really like yeah. that one. And the, I really the, like the, that one. Do, do you know what? Do you know really my nice. biggest, you know, my biggest regret in life is when, when I started tra traveling. Not I mean, no. No. I, 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 I'm a bitter drinker. I love bitter. And so I like Bass, Pedigree, Robinsons, you know, the, the bitters, the Cascales. So when you usually go to somewhere abroad or if you go somewhere that doesn't really do a, a great bitter, I can't drink lager. So I always went on an IPA. So an IPA now, a craft beer around the world, especially North America, I mean, North America was renowned for having rubbish beer, wasn't it? It was Miller Lite, Buds, that kind of stuff. Um, now, they are renowned for craft beer. And this is it. You know, it's an Indian pale ale, which it sounds like it's from India, but it isn't. It's an English thing. But it's, it's just, there's so many out there now. It's absolutely lovely. And I've tried so many around the world. I should have done an IPA around the world tour or, or, or you know, Instagram or something like that because uh, myself and uh, Trevor, we, you know, and, and uh, you, you know, we, we, we travelled so much. We could do it. We could do an IPA tour, couldn't we? You know what I mean. It's you, you know can get used as well. To, you could get used to, it, couldn't you? I've been drinking that Bacchus as well. I had two freezer last night in a in a heavy wine glass. It's like a lager, beer, and black currant, but it really two of them. That gets you. Like, you're on the ropes. You know you've been it. See, see how I see how I've, I've opened your your beer drinking world for you. Just think what we're going to yeah. You're going to be a connoisseur by the time we finish this. Oh, an alcoholic, either one. I think we're ready for our local hero, our last guest guest tonight. Guest, yeah, the, the, the beers are kicking in. <laughs> <laughs> the last guest tonight is one of our local heroes and a great guy who's been part of the World Artistic Team for the last two years. A young man who has done really good. I'm going to speak to him tonight about a few adventures that's worked for him and also some stuff that's not worked for him. But without further ado, please welcome on Barber's Arms for the first time, the one and only Mr. Swab himself, Mr. Jake Lansley. Hello, everyone. Hey, hey boy. How are we, Jake? You are? Not too bad yourself. Very good, mate. Last time I saw you were in Mark Wallies in London. Yes. Uh, and I was like, tell you what, I was actually down in Brighton the weekend and I see his Brighton salon whilst I was roaming around the streets of Brighton. And how, nice. did that, how did that look? Yeah, it's lovely. It was at night time, but it's all lit up nice. Yeah, it's as, as good as the London one. Beautiful down there. So, Jake, you are live. Lifestyle Barbary. Yes, where, I am. Just, to, just tell our viewers where you're based and where you are. So I, I have a um, barbershop in Hornchurch in Essex. Um, been going for six years now. So I was young age of 23 when I opened. And um, yeah, tried to open another shop just before uh, good old COVID come along and that went tits up. So <laughs> back, back, think, back, back to the roots. <laughs> I think that was documented in a magazine as well. You did an interview for yeah. Modern Barber. Modern Barber, yeah, yeah. 
So, Jake, I think it's really good because, we, you know, we had Scorum on a couple of weeks ago when we came back after our summer annual break for Barbara Sounds with a new look show. And I thought Robin Lane was so honest about drugs and alcoholism and, mm. you know, getting back onto it. I think these shows are really good and it's not all about, like, a Facebook. Everybody puts stuff on Facebook, like, oh, I'm having a great time, here's my family. It's like, we just had a massive barney, though, about 10 minutes ago. You didn't put that on Facebook. What I want to talk to you tonight about, look, I've spoken to you personally in the week and I've said to you what I think about you anyway. Yeah. Can you share with people about what happened? You you opened up, you've got your own shop, but then you opened up another venture you wanted to spread out. Yeah. Just not too much detail, just just uh, tell people, because I think people are out there are scared so, of shit. So basically, I... I, I I had on church and I built up a really good team, um, really good team around me. Like everything was going perfect. And um, I just thought to myself, right, now's the right time to sort of spread my wings a little bit more and go, go and do, do something else. So I found this shop in this, oh, it's a beautiful shop, um, grade two listed building. That's, it's about 1,500, no, it's about 750 square foot. Um, stunning skylights, so it's absolutely gorgeous, and, and it was like just about in my budget. So I started looking for investors, and um, basically somebody somebody said they wanted to invest, and in the end I'd done it on my own, which I'm bloody glad I did. And um, so I went and viewed the shop. I was like, "Yeah, wicked, let's do it." So about. Uh, well, I yeah, it must have been about a month of doing it up. Um, month, two months of doing it up. Obviously, I'm to and from the shop, still working the hours and going back and forwards, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's a really affluent area, about 20 minutes away from where I am now, so it's not too far. But then about two weeks before we were due to open, everything was done at the uh, opening party. Two weeks before, before I was due to open, my manager at Hornchurch, well, yeah, my manager at Home Church who was going to go over to the new shop for me told me that he was going to open his own shop. Shit. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I mean... This happens, though. Yeah, it does. It does. So he, he went on... But we don't hear about it. Yeah. No, so it don't tell happen. Us. I mean, to be fair, like, I, I was livid at the time and, like, we had, we had words, but after the first lockdown, I just said to myself I was like what's the point in in causing any dramas like we were friends for a long time so we speak now all the time like I hope he does well with his shop it's only about 10 minutes away from my shop now in Hornchurch not even that five minutes away so he's around the corner um so yeah he, he he done that good luck to him so I had to go over there full time so I lost a lot of clientele in Hornchurch trying to build up the other shop ended up short staffed he then took my print who I'd built up from scratch, who was, uh, yeah, really, he, yeah, that one went went about the wrong way, but hey, hey. So, yeah, then I was two barbers down. So I had one barber in there, myself and another barber in the um, Chigwell shop. And I managed, quite quickly, I managed to get another barber in there. But it was just like, all of a sudden, I had this great team and then it just disappeared. The players started wobbling. Yeah, pretty much. And um, I mean, we we did get fairly busy. And it was just little things like with my shop that I'm in at the moment, it's quite small. And where I'm based, I'm not on a higher street, so I don't get business rates. Where the, the, the other shop was, it's because it's a larger premises you then get smashed, smashed with business rates that you don't expect because you ain't had it at the other shop. You don't expect yeah. to get them elsewhere. So I, I didn't do the right due diligence. I mean, I got a hefty loan of my mum and dad, mate. I'd be straight up about it. Um, I've got a loan of mum and dad still paying it back now three years down the line. And it is what it is. Well, as but, long as you pay it back. Uh, yeah, of course. Cool. Like, like, bank of mum and dad's always there. 
Yeah. Um, if Alex is watching, you you, you know, you still owe me money. <laughs> he wants a new pair of the boots. He, he, well, he, he, well he, he still owes me money, so... Um, <laughs> Jake, um, just moving on from that, thanks for being very honest and candid about that. A lot of are speaking to us. Gaz has said he's been away all week, uh, lording it up on uh, Lord Machin uh, camper vans and holiday homes. But rest of his team's been really busy this week. But a lot of barbers I've spoke to, this is what I'm getting, this is what people are saying to me. It's quieter. I'm getting a lot of no-shows. And guys aren't rebooking when they leave. They're going longer between their visits to what they were before. Is that something that you're experiencing or not? Um, yeah, I kind of, I still get, still getting guys rebooked when they leave. That's that's got more common, if anything, to be fair. But I'm I'm pushing it a little bit more now, just to kind of guarantee that sort of that they're back in two weeks, three weeks, or something. Um. In regards to being busy, it's still it's still a massive yo-yo effect. We spoke about it when we was down at Mark's place. And it is a massive yo-yo effect still. I mean, I've had a really busy week this week, but then the beginning of next week looks shocking. So it's one of them at the moment. Jim, from uh, your point of view, were you always an appointment-based um, barbershop before COVID, or were you walking... Um, when when we first opened, yeah, we was predominantly walk-ins, but no, we done um, we started doing appointments about four years ago, so yeah, well before. I wanted to run my shop like a salon. You get so much better, like time management is so much better, and you can take your time over your haircuts. When you when you got six people waiting for you, you just feel pressurised and you end up banging out rubbish. I, I, I think I think there. There is, there is that argument, but I think from uh, our point of view, we were turning over so many uh, haircuts, but it wasn't about banging them out, it was about quality as well. Yeah, yeah But yeah. I, think, I think from, you know, from our point of view now, being uh, appointment based, it's, it, it's it made us such a better service. We're getting... Yeah much better service we're busier probably um not quite as as we're not doing the turnover as we were prior to covid um i think we're just below but or we, we're probably just below or doing the same but overly uh, obviously the overheads are, are a little bit heavier at the moment um but when when people talk about you know you're not busy enough or whatever, I think it's up to you, um, or up to the stylist, so to say, or the barber, to take some responsibility as well. We, we've we've gone from um, a walk-in service where they literally did whatever they came in the shop to now building a client base and. And I think it's it's really good uh, that you see your, your barbers building their own clients as well, building their own. Uh, and, and in barber shops, that wasn't always the case, was it? You know what I mean? You, I know you you yeah. just said you wanted to time manage, and we've got forty five barbers, forty barbers, forty three barbers plus apprentices now, and it takes it's a lot of. clients to, to fill those those slots forever um do you for, do you take and I, I know you had a bit of a, a bit of a nasty taste in your mouth from your previous apprentice but do you still take apprentices on and how many staff have you got in your shop at the moment so i'll tell you what the worst mistake i ever done after was just shutting that shop down well after after training jack up and putting him on the chair um The worst thing I've ever done was not took another apprentice on. I've always had apprentices and I don't know why, because I had a full team and I didn't have room for another stylist on the chair, even though it would have been a year or two down the line, I never took one on. Where 
that's literally one of the worst mistakes I've ever done because now I'm struggling to find one. Do you, do you know? Do you know what, Jake? I think if I give anybody any, if I've learned anything over the, the industry that I've been in for a long time, always plan for somebody to leave, even if it's you, you know so, your main guy, you, you you know your top barber. I always I always think we we have, we've got academy anyway. We train all our own staff, but I, I always I always that thing have that thing in my mind in the back of my mind that plan for somebody to leave because it takes two two years to train them, another year improver, and a, probably another year to get them earning top money. Yeah. And I think I think you've got to always have in the back of your mind you're waiting for somebody to leave. Yeah. yeah I, I know I know it's a bit negative thing about thinking. Yeah. You've always you've always got to have an apprentice on the go. Got to be time. one step ahead. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I mean when when we went back on um I on 12th, I did have somebody start and we was about a week in. He's only 17, young lad. His mum was a hairdresser, she owned a hairdresser. And um, he was like, yeah, as soon as I'm going to pass out, he was like, I'm gonna, my dad's going to open me a shop. And I just looked at him, I was like, mm, see ya. <laughs> Cock. That's yeah, what you exactly, thought. Exactly, exactly. I was like, why well, tell me that? I ain't going to train you up for two years, waste my money on giving you wages for two years. I know you get a little guy. and grind and stuff but don't pay for the whole thing and then you're going to bugger off yeah, yeah it's, it's difficult isn't it that that is yeah. difficult yeah well you know how i manage you guys so yeah yeah i couldn't do it in your honestly i've said to you before guys oh, you know, my, era, my, my management era is like the 90s and, and the 2000s in salons and there's some of the stuff you have to put up with today i wouldn't last Two minutes because I, I'd be throwing cups against the wall. I'd be <laughs> people pinned against walls. It'd be like, oh, it'd be carnage. I'll, Jay, I'll, yeah. Uh, you, I know you do a few footballers and stuff, and a few celebs and that. But uh, just tell tell all our viewers as well a funny story, a client, a, a client funny story that would spring to mind. Client funny story. Mm. Um, oh, a client funny story. Uh, oh, Matt, I don't even know. That's probably put me on the spot now. A fun... You guys, you young guys are all serious, aren't they, guys? Yeah. Oh, so, so some of the stories we've done through it. I, I, I'll tell you a little funny story where, where, where we had, I had, a, I had an apprentice year. Years ago, and um, we were talking, and he, he was shampooing. I taught him shampooing, so we shampooing at the backwash. And and I said he came away from the backwash. He put him in the chair, and he called me in the back, and he goes, oh. "I said what's up?" He goes, "I don't know, but that that water was absolutely burning my hands. I don't know what the client was." <laughs> <laughs> No way. And I'm like, I looked at him. I said, Are you freaking for real? <laughs> nice one. That's best uh, to say. <laughs> hey, so Gary, I have to say, this guy turns up though uh, at the shows. He's got the best shoe collection in the world. We've got Balenciaga, we've got McQueen's. We've got the boots. We've got the lot. He turns up with some of the best shoes in the world, this young man. Yeah, you have to, gives me a run for my money. Um, <laughs> you get, you're going to you're gonna have to let me know where, where I'm buying from, though, because I've got to turn up one of these days with a pair of shoes that I'll outdo the Mr. Shaw. Can so you imagine Gaz in a pair of shoes? <laughs> um, hey, listen, listen. When I go to Leeds, I'm, you, I'm going to phone you. I'm going to turn up in Leeds for something he's never heard of before. In his life. <laughs> yeah, well, we should, some like um, 
some laboose eye tops, something like that. They they, they look fantastic on you guys. No, uh, yeah. on. <laughs> Jay, what's your what's your what's your plans for the next twelve months? Um, you know, what, what would did you plan for? You jail lifestyle vibrant. What what would you? What's the plans? Planning Shot, uh, yeah, twelve months. Shop um, recruitment. I'm looking for another barber at the moment, an apprentice. Hopefully, towards the end of the year, Christmas time, for another barber. Now all restrictions are gone. I can have four out four chairs, so I can have all chairs filled. And get back to shows. Get back. To, get back out there. Going about a bit. Well, I think you saw Gary. Gary would. Gary J was with us at Manchester for. Yeah. The last live show that, that we did one, at yeah, February 2012 or something. Gary was the guy in San Carlos that got really drunk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Gary was the one that I kept He was the one not on our table, but on our table. Yeah, that I was the one that kept <laughs> talking all their drinks. My bill came about four and a half hundred quid. I thought, oh, she'll go about seven beers. Man, I'll take that. <laughs> so I were ordering beer every five seconds. He came out with something about it after he went, Did you put some beers on my drink? He said, yeah, 11, 11 uh, member, member are, uh, Italian beers. I went, No, I didn't put them on your bill, but I think because I was sat next to you, she put them on your table. Get in. Yeah. <laughs> Tit. Uh, don't worry. We'll buy some loops. We'll put together. We'll have some loops ready for for Leeds. Um, Jay, it's been great to see you, pal. I know we spoke it week, and that I can't wait to see you in person. I can't wait to get out and do some shows and demos and stuff. Uh, I think for you, young man, twelve months getting your head down and making sure that that business you've got is really nice and secure. But you know. Just before you leave us, I wouldn't be put off if you see an opportunity in the future. Your lessons that you've learned would make you different in the next opportunity that you have. So because you've been burned once, it doesn't stop you making a cup of tea, does it? Yeah, exactly. You know? 100%. So I, I would always go for it. Listen, mate, we, 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 we learn by our mistakes, and that's that's all I can say. But in, in this case, I think it was just bad timing. It was yeah. just pure. Yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure it wasn't a mistake. I'm sure it wasn't about what you'd done wrong or you hadn't done due diligence. I think it was just purely bad time. Nothing that we could ever, ever think about had ever happened, hopefully again either, but... All the very best, mate. Hope to have a with you very, very soon. Yeah, thank you for having me, guys. We'll catch up with you very soon, mate. Definitely. Thanks, Jakey, you, boy. Have nice a great week. Cheers, Gary. Cheers, Gary. Take care, boys. Adios. Bye, mate. See you later, mate. Well, we're, we're working overtime tonight. It's now, twi what is it? 25 past nine. We've been finishing a bit early. It's been nice, these little early finishes. Got used to a few Fridays off. We're getting an early finish. Get the guests in. We get them out. A few beers with them. It's been like going to local and just having a few drinks. Love the brew dog. If I'm going to say out the three weeks that we had the ciders, and then we had, what do we have? No, no, we 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 had ciders last week. We had uh, Belgian beers the week before. Belgian beers the week before, yeah. And then we had English ciders the week before that. And today we've had brew dog. My Brood favorite dog. weekend then for this is, is for the collection is been brew dog. My favorite brew dog is Elvis. That's my vote. Uh, well, you know my my say on it anyway, because when we meet up and in brew dog pubs, I eat, I drink the Elvis juice anyway. So, um. Just quickly, we had the Punk IPA, 5.4.
We had the Alvis Juice 5.1 and we had a Hazy Jane at 5. But we didn't miss out on the dead pony club, which I thought you'd have gone for, really, because that was a 3.8. But uh, they are very citrus, different session craft beers, IPAs, and... They are absolutely excellent in my way. You like the lager as well. You, you've got the Lost Lager as well, don't you? You like that one as well. I like the Lost Lager, but for me, looking at the Elvis juice, you could have that with a brunch around about 11 o'clock. Grapefruit juice. That's my favourite. So I'm going to go with Elvis juice. Which is, which is yours? Always the Elvis. You know me. Elvis, I... baby. Where are you going? I love the cans as well. They look really good. I've got a glass fridge down here. They look really good in your glass fridges all lined up. They look really cool. So, well, well done, we, dog. Well we, we, we sell the we, we sell these in the shop as well. So uh, and they go down really, really well. The whole range does. Yes. Really. Styled and pissed at the same time. I love it here at Rogers Barbershops. What? A, you, what a, you know, baby. Well, guys, great evening. Great to have Mitch Lucas on from the Cow Corporation, the sales director. Great interview and a, a real robust, positive vibes about what sales are about and how it, about his career. Then over to Xavier and uh, uh, Richie about the Barber's Ride, the Make-A-Wish Foundation. All, all the details have been on the screen throughout the evening. If you want to get involved, then get involved. What a great cause that is. And then finish off one of our local heroes as well, Jake Lansley. Um, Jake down over in Hornchurch. Um, obviously too late for him. The timings of the show tonight. We're going to be in his shop. We had to get back home. Uh, but great to see everybody tonight. Great to have everybody here on Friday the 23rd of July on Barber's Arms, episode 62, in conjunction with the British Barber's Association and Wall UK. Don't forget to follow us on Simon Shaw Wall. That is my Instagram, guys. Is the British Barber. Barbers underscore arms is our Instagram account. Um, the barbersarms.co.uk is our website. And then if you want to email us, it is barbersarms at the British Barber. Oh, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. It's been super hot in England. I think we've got a few days of cooling down and a little bit wet, which is uh, going to be nice and refreshing. And then we're back to an heat wave. So have a great weekend, guys. Hope you're going to be really busy. Earn a few quid and have a great rest of the week. See you next Friday. And from me, it's... I hope you enjoyed the review of the beers. We've had great guests on tonight. If the industry's in good hands, we've got people like Mitch, who wants to leave us a legacy. We've got Captain Forsey and the Barber Ride team doing it from a charity point of view. And we've got young barbers like Jake Lansley. And hopefully, if they treat everybody the same and be the same, we're in good hands. So from all us at the team, See you later. See you next week.